quark again. So I've already made two videos about how to make quark. The first one was one of my very first videos about making quark from buttermilk and the other quark recipe was making quark from whole milk by making kefir from it first. And so they both have the advantages and disadvantages and today I want to show you how you can make quark just directly from milk, very foolproof. And the struggle that some people had with the other two recipes should be avoided with this recipe. So stay tuned and watch how I make my quark. As I have mentioned it in a different video, I usually make my quark with a quark maker, which is a machine that I got from Europe, it was sent over here, but that product is discontinued and it's quite complicated because the plug wouldn't go into our American plugs and so on and so on. I don't want to go too much into that topic. Um, I want you to be able to make quark without any special equipment and so this is what I'm doing here today. The ingredients that you will need is half a gallon of milk, which is about almost two liters. You will need a little bit of rennet and if you don't want to use animal rennet there is also a vegan version for those who are vegetarians. And then you need a culture that is used for quark. And I was usually using a culture that I got from Germany, but there's a culture here in America that you can get on Amazon. It's a mesophilic culture and uh, I will put a link for this culture below the video so you can find it. Um, another thing that I would recommend you should have is a thermometer. And it might be helpful to also have an oven thermometer and I will tell you in a bit why. Then you will need a cheesecloth and a pot and something to stir. So what you need if you don't have a quark maker is something that keeps the milk at a very certain temperature. And while in my house this is usually a good room temperature, uh, for most people it's not. So most houses are too cold to make quark and in some areas they're even too hot. So the way you can fix this problem is by using your oven. And your oven has settings that are way above the temperature that you need. So here's the fix. You switch on your oven light. And that's what I did and that's where this oven thermometer comes into play. I was measuring the temperature of my oven and it looked good at the first place but after like one and a half hours the temperature in the oven with just the light bulb on has already reached 100 degree Fahrenheit which is too warm. So I switched it off and waited a little and then it reduced the heat to the temperature that I need and I will get to that a little later. So um, the trick is really to get the temperature to somewhere between 72 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22 to 30 degrees Celsius. So, and um, this is something that helps you to check on the temperature and make sure by switching the lamp on and off that your temperature stays somewhere where you want it. Um, yeah. Also very important is that all the equipment that you are using is really, really clean. In the best case, you boil everything and um, really work very clean. So no fingers in the milk or anything like that, because otherwise your milk will just turn sour, but it will not turn into quark and you have to start all over. But that has never happened to me. So really stay very clean while you work this and it will all work out. So the first thing that I need to do is, of course, to fill the milk into the pot. And I will use half a gallon, which is almost two liters. And you will get roughly 400 to 500 grams of quark from this amount of milk. So roughly because it depends on how much of the way you let go out of the milk later out of the quark. So now I have to heat the milk carefully to a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, which is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And since there's nothing to watch there, I will just do it on the oven here and not film it because I'm just heating milk. Okay. So this really only took a few minutes. It's 
barely warm. It's just not as cold as it was when it came from the fridge. So it's a very low temperature. What I'm doing next is I'm adding the cultures. So why am I adding cultures? It's important because our milk is pasteurized and every natural culture is removed. And um, it's, a, it's a good thing actually because not every bacterial culture is what we want to have in our milk. But uh, we need something to put back in there and I'm using a quarter of a teaspoon roughly on half a gallon, a little less than a quarter. And I put this into the milk and I stir this in. Don't know if you can see it. You can see a little bit of the yellowish from the cultures in here. My German culture is pink. It's a little more obvious, but this will work. So I'll mix this well. And now I'm adding the rennet. And there are rennet products with a tablet, uh, kind of like a little thingy that you have to dissolve in water. Um, and I'm using the liquid version, both works. So whatever you can get, it will work. Just look into the instruction how much you will need. I have a little bowl here with a tiny little bit of water and I'm adding like five drops of the rennet. If you use too much rennet, it it affects the taste, so I'm careful with that. And I'm adding this to the milk. And I give it a quick stir. And then I bring it to a halt, so I want this to stop moving. So here's the other important thing that you need to know. When you put your milk into the oven to ferment, you should not move it, not touch it, not do anything with it. Just leave it and let it rest. If you have an earthquake, okay, you can't help it. But other than that, do not touch the milk pot in the oven. You should leave it in the oven for 16 hours. So plan ahead. If you had planned to make a cake during that time, it's not possible because the milk and the quark is in there. So 16 hours at a temperature of 22 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is 72 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, so this goes into the oven. It has already the right temperature and I will see you in 16 hours while you see me in just a second. 16 hours have passed and my quark has spent the time in the oven. And you can see here that this is thickened, yes. And um, I quickly cut a little bit. And you can also can see the liquid on top, and that is whey. So now we want to separate the whey from the quark. And the way we do this is we have a bowl and a colander or something like that. And I place a clean cheesecloth in here, and I'm pouring this into the colander with the cheesecloth now so that the whey will leave through the cheesecloth and the quark will stay in the cheesecloth. So now I could just let this drip now overnight or for several hours, but the best way to do this is to let it drip um, with its own weight over a bowl. And I want to show you how I'm doing this. So I take the corners of the cheesecloth and I make some knots. So I, I want to hang this now. Sometimes I hang this on my kitchen cabinets, but that's not very practical because sometimes I want to open them and then it's in the way. So I want to show you the old fashioned way that Germans used to do, and that is with a stool. So I'm using this stool here, taking, turning it upside down. 
and I am putting a bowl in here. Then I'm using a wooden spoon and and I hang this onto the wooden spoon, move this over here and hang it right here in the stool. And this can take about, I would say, four to five hours. And the longer you drain your, let me put this aside so you can see me, the longer I drain the quark, the more dry it gets. And uh, I personally like it more dry. Some people like it more on the little creamy side. Um, what you can also do is with the quark, once it's finished with the draining and it is uh, kind of dry, you can add a little bit of cream and mix it in. That makes it even more delicious. So I will let this drain now and then I will continue and show you how it looks in the end. I have this quark now hanging for five hours and let's take a look. So, as I said, the longer you let it drain, the drier the quark. And sometimes it's a good idea to do that overnight. Okay, so here you can see it. Not very exciting, just a white mass of something, but um, you can make so many things with it. So let's quickly talk about the whey before I continue with the quark. So, um, this is quite a bit of whey and that's not even all. I emptied this jar, um, this bowl once and um, so you could of course just throw it out but there are so many things you can make with whey. You can put it in your bath when you fill your bath tap. You can, I personally um, bake a lot of bread with whey instead of the water. Um, you can make soap with it. There are so many uses for whey and I found a website that has a lot of ideas for that. So I will link to that website and I uh, hope you get inspired there. Whey contains a lot of vitamins, a lot of protein and lots of minerals. So it's a really healthy thing. If you throw it away, it's a little bit of a pity. Okay, now let's take a look at the quark here. And um, I want to put this on the scale and see how much we got out of a half gallon. So. And if your quark goes into the fridge, it will become more dense. And it also might happen that some more whey is appearing on top of the quark that is not a bad sign or anything. You can either mix it in or just discharge it. Okay, so how much did we get out of a half gallon? In this case, it's 650 grams. If I would let it drain a little longer, it would probably go down like more like um, 550 grams. But this is quite a bit. Let me see how much that is in pounds and ounces. It's uh, almost 23 ounces and in pounds it's 1.4 pounds. So that is quite a bit. And for many recipes in Germany, you need like 500 grams of quark. Uh, for the baked cheesecake, you would usually need one kilogram, so a little more than this. And you will find more recipes for quark on my blog and in the video channel. You can bake with quark, you can make dough with it, you can make uh, cakes with it. There are lots of uses. You can make some quark with some herbs and garlic and use it as a bread spread. So there's so much you can do with it. We really love quark in Germany. I hope you liked this video. I hope you try this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell button and please stay tuned for the next video.